It's so easy to see That you're in love with me Carve your name next to mine On that big old tree It's how you want it to be You bring me things from the store And put it at my front door I've lost count of the times this have happened before Not that I'm keeping score Cause I do the same for you Just like I'm supposed to do I'm yours You're mine If you ever feeling blue Rest assured I've been there too We just pick up where we left off Then we tow the line That's fine. It's time. Sunday breakfast in bed. Now, it's not seven. Strawberry okay. jam on some One, bread. Two, and if you oh. feel like doing anything to say, go ahead. Oh. I just lay here instead. Cause I do the same for you, just like I'm supposed to do. I'm yours, you're mine If you ever feeling blue, rest assured I've been there too We just pick up where we left off, then we tow the line That's fine Well today the plan is, is to try to get the first container on the dolly and moved into position. <laughs> but there's a lot of steps that we need to still do. Like we need to go out there and cut off those pipes that we had put in. And those pipes are concreted underneath the slab. If y'all remember, I think it ended up being like two and a half, three foot, at least three foot. It was three foot. So those are three foot concreted underneath the, how thick was the slab? Four to six inches ish. On average, it came out to about five inches thick. Now cutting that pipe off is gonna prep the slab to get it ready where we can row the ultimate hoodas up there with the container on it. <sighs> Y'all look, we're pretty confident in this, but we only have just a medium size to smaller end Ford old tractor with a front end loader on it. And we're gonna be trying to pick up this container and get this ultimate hoodas positioned underneath this container far enough to where we can kind of use it like a trailer. In other words, we can pick up just a little bit of weight with a tractor without having to pick up all of the weight of the container. Kind of like a, I guess a wheelbarrow. <laughs> and when we get it somewhat in place, we're gonna just try to get it off of that dolly back onto those six by six blocks that we had it originally set on. That's gonna hold it up off of the container that's going to allow us to be able to shift these containers and get them perfectly centered because remember we're going to be putting two more 40 foot high cube containers on top of these this is going to be a two-story we ain't even crossed that bridge yet <laughs> but they have to be exact and they have to be perfect or our whole plan the whole all the engineering behind this is not going to work So Jim's just gonna take this wheel, buff these up, and then we're gonna get to cutting off. Now we could use a torch like we said in the last video and we opted not to do that. We wanted to try Hart's angle grinder and it really actually exceeded our expectations. So we are gonna be using that again today. Told y'all that we were gonna give y'all our honest opinion about how this ended up working out for us. And it actually did way better than we ever thought that it would. 
So this is gonna save us a lot of time. Found a little cut off piece of three quarter board and some soapstone. So I'll be able to lay that flat on the ground and that should give us about three quarters of an inch, which is a little bit more than we wanted, but we can always grind it down. Right. Three more. Yesterday, whenever we got everything in place and we got the tractor underneath the container, what happened, honey? Well, the rear end of the tractor started coming up and the front tire started kind of burying in the ground. It was a little wetter than we anticipated. Now we have been having a lot of rain and we do get a lot of rain this time of year. So we did expect that little bit of sponginess in the ground, but we really didn't know it was gonna be that bad. So we really had a few options. First thing we could have done was put some boards where the front tires of the tractor would have been to give us more surface area to kind of disperse the weight. Then we could have hooked up like the six foot bush hog to the back of it, stack some weight on in order to pick that up. Now in all reality, we have a little medium sized tractor and it does really good, but that would be putting more stress than we anticipated on the front of the tractor and the front end loader. Option two was to make that phone call to the dirt doctor like we told y'all a few episodes ago, Jim's brother has equipment. If y'all have been with us for a little while, you've seen him. He's made his appearance here and there to help us out when we get in a bind. And we thought about calling him to see if he had anything just down the road that he wasn't using. Fingers crossed we were gonna get lucky that he even had a piece of equipment around that wasn't on a job site. So kind of the options came down to what's gonna be safer. And we absolutely could have hooked this tractor up, but when we made that phone call, it ended up working in our favor. Now, if y'all watched the last couple of episodes, we have tried to do everything to outsmart 
the equipment that we had here on site because we really didn't want to inconvenience anybody and we wanted to be able to use what we actually own. Well, there comes a point in time to where you either take a chance of tearing something up or doing something unsafe or just backing up. <laughs> Rojo. <-ho. laughs> using a little humility and asking for help. And that's exactly what we did. The other option that we did have, and this would have worked as well, is y'all honestly, <laughs> honestly, we could have just waited for it to dry up, but we really don't know whenever that's supposed to happen. It rained two days ago and we've had two days now, and then it's supposed to be like 90% tomorrow. So we would have had no clue whenever we would have actually got a chance to come out here and get the container moved. Keep in mind, we live in South Louisiana. So if it rains an inch, there's an inch of water on the ground. <laughs> We did get this piece of equipment, but it is not, uh, what do you say? It's not a large piece of equipment, but it's bigger than what we have. So as far as weight ratio, hydraulics, this ought to do the trick, but I guess we're soon gonna find out. So we have a mini excavator, and it's a pretty good size mini excavator. It's not a really small one. The track width is wide, and it actually has a blade on the front of it, so we can put that blade down and use it kind of an outrigger of sense. That'll give us a little bit more leverage to pick up on this container. We get it up to where we want it. We have to put a mark in the center of this container to be able to figure out where we want to distribute this weight at, because we're going to move it with a tractor, but we got to get some weight alleviated off of that hinge point first. What would the dirt doctor say right now? He'd probably say, get off my piece of equipment. No, I think he'd say, <laughs> let's go, Papa! <laughs> <laughs> let's go, Papa! All right, here we go. So we need to move the Ultimate Hootis over just a little bit to the left because whenever I think Jim went to push it, he pushed more on that side. I think yesterday had it lined up pretty well. But we're just gonna hook up the Ultimate Hootis. <laughs> little less talk and a lot more action. <laughs> we're gonna hook up the Ultimate Hootis to the Chaco since we have it available and just scoot it right on over because this is heavy, let me tell y'all. Remember whenever we added that extra inch or so? It's a dang good thing that we did. <laughs> we needed it, didn't we? Holy smokes. It fits just right. Like it's gonna be a little tight, which it, there ain't nothing wrong with that, but. It might even rub a little bit, but I really don't care. Like I said, we're only gonna move it a couple hundred feet. All that's doing is testing our welding skills. <laughs>
We need the Hootis to be able to scoot back to that middle line that we made earlier. And I don't know why I'm trying to help you. <laughs> and in order to do so, we've got to be able to raise this container up a little bit more. And surprisingly, even this Trico is... It is not wanting to do it. No, it's not wanting to do it. So, so we're going to run these chains through one more spot on this Trico and see if it can give it a little bit more leverage. And if it can't, I'll have to try something else. So here I'm even with that 20 foot, which is half of the container. And this back tire needs to be even with this line or at least pretty close to it. So what needs to happen is we need to be able to pick the container up some more. And I guess that, that Traco just didn't have it in it. So we're gonna give our tractor one last run. It is a decent size, but like Jim said, it is medium size. So if we would have had a large tractor, this probably would have never even been an issue. I probably shouldn't say that or else I'll turn around and we'll have another tractor sitting in the yard. But I do believe if we would have had a bigger tractor, this would have never been an issue. Now, that being said, since it is lifted up off the ground and the Hootis is under it, we do think that the tractor that we have is going to be able to lift it up enough to try to scoot this back. And that tractor just needs to pick up on this container just maybe a foot or two, not a whole bunch, just enough where we can get this thing scooted down there and close enough to half that we can call it good. Now me not knowing about kind of what he had in his mind, we had, well, we had a little bit of a game plan, but he kind of took the lead on this project. And I really thought that this was just gonna be at the end of the container, but moving it to the middle, it's gonna give a lot more of that weight distribution to the Hootis and the tractor versus putting the Hootis on the back, which would give the tractor all the weight. So I do understand why we're doing it and it makes a lot of sense. So it is going to be kind of a crucial part. A lot of people might ask, well, why don't you just try to pull it like it is? But that's going to be a lot more weight on the tractor. So distributing that weight is going to be the key here. And Jim's going to get the tractor hooked up to the bush hog and we'll try her again. Man, what I wouldn't give to have a bigger tractor, like a hundred horse, New Holland, cabin air, four wheel drive, all the bells and whistles. This would have been a breeze, but no, I've got this little cream puff, which serves us well, but it needs to be three times this size. We live in the country. I think we need a bigger tractor. I really believe we need a bigger tractor. Maybe I should start tractor shopping. The more you say it, doesn't mean the more you're gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I got to learn to speak to myself a little more quietly. You know us, trying to pick up containers with a lawnmower, pretty much, you know, just the oh, usual. That'd be working great, huh? Here, we put the bush hog on our little tractor, pick it up enough to keep scooting the axles forward. Well, that didn't happen either. Yes, yeah, so we just buried in the front tire. So, anyway, what are you doing? Yeah? yeah. Uh, you wouldn't be interested in bringing old Big Blue over here for about five minutes, would you? Just try to get up on it, huh? Oh, we, got it, yeah, we got it pit way up. It's sitting on there, but we need to move it straight ahead about four or five more feet. That would be. Yeah, I'll, I'll run it on over and we'll see if they'll pick it up. All right. Maybe we can do it that or something. If it won't, I don't know. We'll see if it's not with we'll something out, maybe. Yeah, maybe with your tractor, plus that mini hoe picking up on it. Yeah. Okay. Well, sounds good. Uh, sorry. Sorry for the inconvenience. No, it, I mean, whenever somebody wants to come 
somebody calls and they need something. <laughs> yep, that's right. <laughs> I'll be there in a minute. All right, thank you, man. What's that snapping and popping out here? That was your side. <laughs> that one. Might have should have put another pass on that puppy. Look, these are mine. Mm -hmm. I'd rather mine look good and break. Smoke one more around it. <laughs> yeah. No, you know what you call that? Non-fusion. <laughs> All the way around. <laughs>